Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Revelation Revealed Ministry, a ministry designed to explain truth in all its fullest. I want to let you know that I'm enjoying this ministry, um, and I want to thank you for all the calls, uh, the commendations, and all the messages about getting, uh, you're getting uh, great blessings from listening, tuning in. I want to thank you. I want to also thank you for your support. For those who are inviting their friends or sending a sermon uh, on to your friends, uh, it's a blessing. And so many around the world have been blessed by this ministry. I miss you during the week. I look forward to meet you every Friday night 9 to 10 on Revelation Revealed Ministry. May God bless you, and I'm sure that you'll be extremely inspired tonight as you listen to our discussion and participate. Make sure you take your Bibles. It's a wonderful thing It's um, um, to, to worship and to have your Bibles uh, along uh, your bedside. You can open and check to see if we're on the right path. So each evening, make sure you take your sword and follow along. Um, <clears throat> I would ask of you to please make sure that you invite a friend each night and subscribe. You are doing much better, but you are so much behind. So please continue to do that. It means a lot to me and to the ministry. May God bless you. Um, before we begin, I would like to read a passage of scripture. I will pray, then I will introduce our guest for the evening. And if you have your Bibles with you, you could turn with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, starting at verse 3. And I read in your hearing. Now, as he sat, Jesus, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to him, Take heed that no one deceive you. So one of the first things that Jesus talked about or talked about is deception. All right? Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. Don't be too worried when these things happen. For these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And verse 7, for nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famine. And the next one I want you to underscore is pestilence and earthquake in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrow. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Let us pray. Loving, gracious Father, we thank you for your word of truth that will guide us. It's the road map that will take us where we want to go. Into your hands we commit ourselves this evening, and as we worship, impart wisdom to us. In the worthy name of Jesus, let everyone say, Amen. This evening... I am so delighted to have an astute guest to share this platform with me. 
His name is Mr. Glenn Robinson, or maybe I should say Brother Glenn Robinson, my good friend. By profession, it and I heard, he's so humble. Glenn is a financial advisor. Uh, is that correct? And a layman in ministry. He's also a well-informed student in Daniel and the Revelation. And tonight, we will discuss the current prophetic fulfillment in our time. Glenn, I would like to welcome you to Revelation Reveal Ministry. Um, I look forward for this day when we'll be on this platform to talk together and to discuss Bible. It's a joy to have you. We miss Marie, so let her know that we missed her, and we hope to, that the next time you come back, she will be here also. Before I begin, I must publicly tell my audience and the world, I want to say thanks to you for your support that you have given to me in ministry while I was in active duty. I, rec I recall succinctly the many nights, even during the winter, that you, have you drove from, I think, about two hours to come to Scarborough when I was there uh, to teach us and to do a revelation seminar for me. Then you came back again and you did a seminar in, in soul winning. I remember that. It was the last one. And I recalled the church offered you a gift. After you have done all that through so many months, winter, bad times. I remember your car written off and you were here. And, and you returned the gift and said, you know, we were, we were building the church, I can remember. And you said, no, pastor, this is for the church. I did this for you. And I admire that. And I want to thank you. And every time I call, you are there for me. And I want to thank you ever so much. God bless you as you, um, in, um, you enjoy your retirement, I would imagine, and all that you do in ministry. All right, would you like to say a word to my, my audience? Thank you very much, Pastor Herlock, uh, for inviting me, and I can come here. You've always been a good friend to Marie and I, and uh, we've enjoyed the time we have visited the church. Um, God is good. God is awesome. And the experience I've had with God moves me, motivates me, emboldens me to go out and try to do some ministry for the cause, cause of Christ. Um, I'm glad to be on here this evening, very humbly, because the Word of God that we handle it's only the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives that we can make sense of what we uh, endeavor to teach or to preach. So thank you for having, and we just invite the Holy Spirit to be with us this evening. And prayerfully, through the presentation this evening, some person hearing this message, their faith is going to be strengthened, their hope is going to be heightened, and prayerfully many more would come to a knowledge of the truth whereby they could be saved. Thank you for having me. And Murray sends her... Her thanks also, unfortunately, she, she had planned on being here, but something came up last evening and then she had to forego coming here. So, but I think I've discerned, I've heard something in the back there, you'll be inviting me back. I'm looking forward yes, to it. Yes, yes, most definitely. Thank you. And I want to let you know that Glenn drove at least five hours to do a one-hour program. That's how committed he is, and I want to thank you. Amen. Now... My introduction to our discussion. The long conflict between good and evil has brought the world to, the, to a crisis point in history. But like the sons of Issachar, we must know the time and what to do about the time that we are in. In regards to deception, scripture tells us that it will be the first signs of his coming. Great deception will be in our world. And it has started. If it was possible, the Bible said, the very elect would be deceived. Um, even about the literal coming of Christ. Some will say, well, he's in the desert. 
Others will say, he's in a secret chamber. And people will be running. Now the Bible said, no, 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 my brothers and sisters, don't you follow those things. I am going to give you. I am the road map. Or the Bible is the road map. As a lightning flash in the east. So, so God is concerned about deception. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Now, um, since the pandemic, thousands of people have been misguided about the vaccine being the mark of the beast. We have seen videos sent around, discussions on YouTube, roundtable discussion. If you go on Google, there's so much on Google about uh, the vaccine being the mark of the beast. And it allow or cause people to be really confused. But Christians should not be confused. If you're confused about this, then you or I, myself, should do a little bit more reading. Uh, because God has given us an outline of what the mark of the beast is. So let's have a conversation uh, this evening. But before we talk about it, let me be frank with you, be clear with you, that uh, this program is not to promote or degrade the vaccine. Each person must be persuaded to make a conscious decision whether or not to take it. So I am not here to tell you to do it or not to do it. You have to make that choice. But we are here to clear up some fuzziness, if we could put it that way, that seem to lurk around in the shadows. Now, there are 7.8 billion people that live on this earth today on 510.1 million square miles of land surface. This virus spread to every country in the world, with the exception of a few island nations, such as North Korea. That's what the report said. Also, the report says that it cannot be verified, but we put it here. And you know, North Korea is the border with China and South Korea. Then Turkmenistan, which is located in southwest Central um, Asia region. That's near Afghanistan. And uh, Tuvalu, northeast of Australia, and uh, Nauru, which, is bo which borders with uh, Papua New Guinea. These countries, the report says, are not affected. Now, if we were to go back to uh, 2 Timothy 3 and verse 1. Paul drives home the point when he said, perilous times shall come. And Matthew 24 further outlines some birth pain or pandemic that would happen uh, in the world. First of all, I, as I mentioned the, uh, while I was reading the scripture, deception is one of the first ones. We ought to be careful of that. Then earthquake in diverse places, famine for food. And then Amos 8 verse 11 talks about famine for the hearing of the word of the Lord. So all these meetings uh, that we're having, the Bibles that we throw away, and um, churches that are open and are empty, one of these days uh, you will not even find a church <laughs> or you'll find a Bible. Uh, there will be a famine for that. Epidemics are not foreign to this world. The Black Death struck Europe and Asia in the mid-1300s, which we call the Middle Ages. 
or the Middle Age. 50 million people died. This COVID took 5.07 um, million lives and could have done the same as the Black Plague were it not for God first, then we have natural remedies, people did do that, and measures that we have taken, such as using masks and social distances and so on. And then technology, uh, the rapid movement of information, allow us to take shelter quickly. And then science, through which the vaccine was developed, which so many coined as the mark of the beast. And this is where the substance of our discussion will focus tonight. And uh, we have our guest here, Glenn, who, will, who is versed in prophecy and uh, is very helpful. And we, all, we will discuss it together. All right, so Glenn, let's start. Sure. <laughs> My first question. Among the list of birth pain that um, Matthew talks about, the one that I picked out is pestilence. Okay. How is it different from the common cold, which is also universal? Well, thank you. It's a great question. But you had asked me to come and talk about prophecy. Now you asked me to talk about health. But I'll tell you what. It's both of them are respiratory um, illnesses. So the common cold, we have it um, every year. It comes and goes. Um, it incubates in the human body for between one to three days. It lasts between seven to 10 days, and that's the end of it. It's recurring. And um, there's really very rarely you're going to hear someone dying from it, okay? However, the COVID-19, it's a respiratory illness also, but it is highly contagious. And so it is characterized then as a pestilence. Okay, but would you say the common cold is an um, um, is a pandemic? No, it's not a pandemic. Ah, right. So I was saying, what is the difference? Because pestilence, would you say pestilence would be pandemic? Exactly. Exactly. So then we would say, what is the difference between a common cold that is not pandemic but is worldwide? It is worldwide. And, um, uh, and pestilence. Okay, so when we think about, you, you just mentioned the Black Death. We mm -hmm. can sp speak about the Spanish flu. Mm -hmm. 500 million people around the world were affected by it, and over 50 million people died. Now that in itself, it's global mm -hmm. in its perspective. The symptoms are very similar, okay, between the common cold and, well, what we've seen as COVID-19 right now, mm -hmm. okay? But the difference between the two is that a significant difference is, is that it in, the COVID-19 incubates in the human body up to 14 days. And a person could be walking around, not aware of the symptoms, and then they can be, in, they are contagious, and then they can affect someone. Mm -hmm. Secondly is that the, the deaths being so contagious, so uh, a person by sneezing, coughing, um, or someone touching something that was contagious, that, that person could become infected. And it's not something that goes away. So what happens with it? They need a vaccine for it. We don't need a vaccine for the common cold, okay? Right. But we need a vaccine to, and not only that, um, the governments and the various health departments had to impose mitigating measures. You need mitigating measures. So for example, social distancing, um, having to wear a mask to try to contain it. And if, it is, if a um, vaccine is not found for it, okay, it means that the number of deaths would just increase uh, exponentially. All right, to make it shorter, uh, let me ask you another way. Given the all-encompassing impact of the COVID, would you consider it one of the pestilence in the last days? Well, we have to remember that the pestilences that Jesus talked about you know, Paul talked about the last days. Peter talked about the last days. In the book of Hebrews, it says that um, God has chosen his son, Jesus Christ, to speak to us in the last days. Mm -hmm. 
So there's a period of time, and we're living, definitely living in the, the last days. Mm -hmm. But pestilences, you just mentioned the first one, the Black Death, going back to the 13th century. And so we're into, so what these signs, the purpose of these signs, as we see them, okay, as we, it reminds us of our faith, the blessed hope, the second coming of Jesus Christ. So, so from one generation to another, we would say definitely the pestilence now, we would call the COVID-19 a pestilence, is a reminder to the degree to which, okay, um, the signs are being fulfilled in preparing us for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Okay, so then, yes, what you're saying, the, the COVID-19 is, 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 is considered a pestilence. It should be, the yeah. number of people yeah. that have yeah. been yeah. affected, over 250 million people, <laughs> right. and it's global. Right, okay. So then the next, uh, I think, and I would throw this in, mm -hmm. uh, what folks would be saying these days or even the Bible talks about the scoffers mm -hmm. who will say all things continue as they were. Mm -hmm. Because here we talk about the black plague that killed 50, 000, 50 million people, mm -hmm. and now we have the COVID. Things continue, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So there's no end time or such. Mm -hmm. Where is the Christ that is coming? But one thing that we must understand, you will always see pandemic, mm -hmm because we have seen it before, mm -hmm. but the difference in the last days is the frequency, how often these things will happen, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because we've about 100 years now since there was one. But now, now we've, seen, uh, we've seen so many different things these days. We have the... Um, uh, what are some of the diseases that we see? Um, well, we had HIV. HIV. We have not found the vaccine. And exactly. Many we have um, SARS. Mm -hmm. Frequency, That's right? How correct, often yes. these things mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the black, uh, not the black, um, flesh-eating disease. Mm -hmm. Remember that one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember that one. Took some, And so it is the frequency mm -hmm. of these things that you will see. So mm -hmm. don't be fooled. Mm -hmm. um, they will happen more often. Mm -hmm. All right. Also, so we consider the COVID as a pestilence. We would like to have a discussion about the vaccine. Yes. Whether it should be seen as a mark of the beast or not. To some extent, a large group within the Christian realm believe that the vaccine is a mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Because the vaccine came to um, stop mm -hmm. uh, the... Um, the, the pestilence or the disease or the virus is used, is developed for that purpose. And so some people said, well, this is one of the reasons um, some of the people, they don't take the vaccine mm -hmm. because they believe it is the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Glenn, could you prove to my audience from scripture what constitutes the mark of the beast? Because we, we have to help each other. And if some people are confused that a vaccine is a mark of the beast, then there needs to be some explanation. Could you help us? Well, the people that are thinking of the mark of the beast right now, they're thinking of end times. Okay. Things yes. are coming to an end. Yes. Okay? Yes. And if, as you mentioned earlier, that many people are talking about the mark of the beast, it's a stamp in the forehead, it's a microchip in the hand, now they're talking about the vaccine, there's something there. If we take, I, I had prepared a, a PowerPoint slide here. If, could we get, just get that PowerPoint slide up, please? And we're gonna take a look at what constitutes the mark of the beast. Right. Because in, in the passage of scripture that we find it in the book of Revelation, okay, we have to read that passage of scripture in the context of the book of Daniel. You see, because it is in the book of Daniel we find these beasts. Can we just have the PowerPoint slide up here, please? Mm -hmm. So in the book of Daniel chapter seven, Daniel is in, is, uh, he has a vision, and he sees three beasts coming out of the seas. And he says the very first beast he saw, it was like a lion. The second beast, it was like a bear. The second beast was like a leopard. And the, th the fourth beast was a nondescript beast. He could not describe it. Mm -hmm. And then he talks about the last beast that he saw the, the last piece that he saw, so if we can just take a look at, so let us back up a little bit. Let us look at the context in which the mark of the beast 
is recorded in the book of Revelation. So in the book of Revelation chapter 13, we see the mark of the beast, okay? And it reads, And he doth, doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of the miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should, be both, that should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that hath the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And so most people just isolate the mark of the beast. But there is the name of the beast, and then there's the number of the name of the beast. Mm -hmm. So now, to understand the book of Revelation, we just cannot just draw on the book of Revelation we have to go to the book of Daniel, because that is where we find the origin. So in the prophecy of Daniel chapter 7, it reads, In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions upon his head, uh, on his bed. That, that he, then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spoke and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea, and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. So four is understandable. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand beast and we have to understand sea. Then it says, the, verse four, then the first was like a lion and that first beast, um, it had a dominion from 605 BC to 539 BC. And behold, another beast, the second like a bear. After this I beheld unto another like a leopard. After this I saw in the night visions and behold a fourth beast dreadful and terrible and strong, exceedingly, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up, upon, came up among them another little horn. We now have to rely upon scripture mm -hmm. to, do, uh, to provide the interpretation of the prophecy. Mm -hmm. So when you take a look at scripture, prophetic interpretation, Daniel 7, 17. So the angel is talking to Daniel now, the angel that came to give Daniel the understanding of the prophetic vision. He says, these great beasts which are four are four kings which shall rise out of the earth. Right. So the beast in Revelation, now that, that beast is symbolic of a kingdom, number one. Mm -hmm. Daniel chapter seven. King or kingdom. King or kingdom. Mm -hmm. Well, if there is a king, he's got a kingdom. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Daniel 7, 24, 25. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings. Right. So Daniel is providing, the angel is providing the interpretation to Daniel. But how about the seas? So how about the seas? So the sea then represents multitude, nations, People. peoples. Mm -hmm. So it means a highly populated area. Mm -hmm. So now that we've got the understanding, the interpretation of the beast, we can then try to understand what's the mark of the beast because we know it's a kingdom. Right. Okay. okay. So let's continue here a little bit. So in Revelation 13, 1 to 2. Now, so when Daniel wrote this um, prophecy, he wrote this in the, it was the, uh, the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon. Mm -hmm. So that would be somewhere about 549, 548 BC. So John the Revelator now is writing in the first century AD. And in the vision, he sees this beast. He says, and I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. No, we saw the leopard in the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. and, and his feet were as the feet of a bear. Bear. Remember, that was the second kingdom in uh, Daniel's vision. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and his great authority. So 500 years later, the Apostle John is writing, and he sees a composite beast. Mm -hmm. Now, what ties the book of Daniel to the book of Revelation is this verse, Dan Daniel chapter 7, 12. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had the dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. So let's put it in the context now. Mm -hmm. So Daniel saw the rise and fall of kingdoms, mm -hmm. and the kingdoms that he saw he saw them as Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Greece, Rome, pagan Rome. Mm -hmm. But then 
he sees the breakup of the last kingdom and the breakup, he considered them as horns. Mm -hmm. And you just saw there in the interpretation that horns represent a kingdom. So the link between Daniel and Revelation, now if we can now try to understand the mark of the beast in the book of Revelation. Okay. It has to be a kingdom. It has to have a rule. It has to have dominion in this earth. And now when, when he talks about that beast out of the sea, ha, it, it was like a leopard. It had the, the feet of a bear and the mouth like a lion. What it is saying is that there are characteristics of the kingdoms of Babylon, Medo-Persia, and Greece that are going to be carried over into this last kingdom that is going to try to rule the world. So, for example, with the um, kingdom of Babylon, it was idolatrous and image worship, number one. Mm -hmm. Medo-Persia, it was an unchangeable law. Greece brought us phil philosophical thinking and very sophisticated architecture. Mm -hmm. So now we can take a look and see this beast that um, John the Revelator is talking about, how does it apply to us, the Christian church living at this time? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you much. Okay. So let us take a look at seven, Daniel chapter 7, 24, 25. That is how we understand Revelation chapter 13 and this mark of the beast. We're going to come to it. And the ten horns out of this ten king, kingdom, of this kingdom are ten kings. So on the breakup of the Roman Empire, it was broken up into ten parts, mm -hmm. ten kings. So we, we refer to them today as France and Spain and Germany, you know, England. Britain, and these places. Mm -hmm. It says that arise. It says, and another shall arise. Mm -hmm. So not only do we have ten kingdoms, they're all political, but another is going to arise among those ten. So we now have eleven horns. It says, but he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. So now this little horn or this kingdom is going to be diverse. It's going to be different. But look at how it is different. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. So it will be political and religious. This, the difference here. That's the diverse That's part it. of it. Yeah, the Political difference. and religious. religious. But not only is it going to be religious, it's going to attack. It's going to attack, it says, and it shall wear out, uh, verse 25, and it shall speak great words against the Most High. And that means what? It's going to speak against God. Okay. Good? Mm -hmm. and, um, and he shall wear out the sins of the Most High. That's persecute God's people. Right. And shall cha change time and think and think to change times and laws. All right. So what you're really narrowing it down to pin uh, that system or king or kingdoms that would um, have that uh, the mark of the beast that would yes. Okay. All right. right. So so when we think about the mark, remember you go back to the Bible that um, Cain a mark was put on Cain. If yes. you go to the book of Ezekiel, a mark was placed on the people, but God's people. But those were literal marks. But were they literal mark? That's what, I, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Well, it's a literal mark or it was that's just... Something more than that. Okay. So yeah. Because many people, if they're looking for a tattoo in today's world, or they're looking for a memory chip, some put, one person interpreted it as currency, mm -hmm. as the mark of the beast. We have to get it correctly. Because if we don't get it, get it correctly, we're all deceived. That's right. So only the Bible can provide the interpretation. And in, in earlier on in the presentation, Jesus said something. We missed it earlier on. And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Mm -hmm. So when we get the interpretation correct and we see history provides a confirmation Okay. It emboldens our faith mm -hmm. and our hope is strengthened. Go so going back to um, the earlier verses here, sorry about that. So we'll have a break right now and we will come back to, to Glenn. But uh, we have a quartet from my church in, in Jamaica. I left Jamaica for many years. A part of my growing up has been in Canada but I still have contact there, and um, 
I'm so delighted to see the young people that are coming on and doing some of the things that we used to do, like singing. It was one of the great things. Quartet was um, in the uh, 70s, 80s, was reigning supreme. And uh, I listened to one of the quartets that now Rollington Town Church in Kingston, Jamaica, and the name of the quad is O-D-E. Now, I don't know if the abbreviation, I should say it just like that, or O-Day, but I've listened to them on YouTube. I have also um, subscribed to their channel. I'm amazed of the, the harmony that they bring out. And at this time, they will sing for us, and I'm so proud of them. Thank you very so much.
All right, we're back again and uh, with uh, Brother Glenn Robinson to explain um, what is the mark of the beast. Now, I would suggest, having gone through all of that, I know it, it took you a while for you to get to this point to put it together. And it's not going to be so easy for my members or my audience out there to catch it. Um, I see prophecy, um, I look at it as music. If you don't continue practicing, you lose it. <laughs> if you don't keep studying prophecy, you will forget it because it comes, it's like science. It comes with numbers and, and things like that. So I would ask my audience, I would ask you to go back, listen to this, the uh, discussion again, step by step, use your Bible, and you will understand the backdrop to what he's about to finish saying. All right, so um, it's very difficult to understand. It's not necessarily difficult, but if you don't really study it gradually, take mm -hmm. time, go and dissect, read, come back, do collateral reading, you won't get it. So um, finish us off. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. It is really important that people read the Bibles and study the Bibles. Yes. This here is to stimulate people's, um, their enthusiasm or they're thinking about the time of the end. And it is going to be an end that we cannot fathom, we cannot understand. It's going to be the end of the way of things as we know it. And this prophecy prepares us for the end. It helps prepare us for the end, I should say so. And of course, I know our members and our people, and even myself, we want a different world. We want mm -hmm. Jesus to come, um, you know. But we have to allow ourselves to make sure that we base our belief on our thinking on facts. Mm -hmm. Not because somebody says something, you jump on it. You know, what do you base your decision making mm -hmm. on? Mm -hmm. And that's why we're going through this process. Mm -hmm. As you rightly said, mm -hmm. we need to get back to the scripture. Yeah. And, and, study. Go ahead. and, and we're going to see, as we build here, in looking at the mark of the beast, it, um, our whole, um, how should I put it? Our eternal destiny rests on it. Our mm -hmm. eternal destiny rests right. on it. Exactly. And if we go back to, we're looking at, we're looking at Daniel 7, 24 and 25. And so here is the breakup of the Roman Empire. And that's the western part of the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. Breaks up. And the ten horns out of the kingdom, which is Rome, are ten kings that shall arise and another king or kingdom, horn kingdom, shall rise after them and shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Would think to challenge the Most High, the place of the Most High. Mm -hmm. And shall where are the saints of the Most High? Persecute God's people. And think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and time and the dividing of times. And we've seen that happen. Th that, that is in that's secular right. history. That's correct. Uh, from 532, uh, somewhere there. 530 right to 1798. To 1798. And, yes. And we, so, you know, 50 million people. You know, COVID, this uh, black death took, I was looking at it, mm -hmm. took 50 million people. Mm -hmm. And during the persecution in the Middle Ages, all, all, um, almost to the Renaissance, really, you, you know, to 17th century. 50 million Christians were slaughtered. Yes. So we've seen that. Yeah. All right. And they, they were slaughtered for the cause of God. Yes. And they were slaughtered by the church. Okay. Yes. So the persecution came from within. Right. Now, it was supported and aided by the state. And we're moving to that place in time again. Right. There's now, going to be now a repetition we're getting into of it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these were the ten kingdoms. Then he says that, and this little horn now that comes out after these ten kingdoms shall be different. It's going to challenge God in the earth. Mm -hmm. What we're looking at here, let's try to see if we can put, identify this little horn, this little kingdom. This kingdom that is so diverse. This kingdom that speaks um, words against the most high God. The, this kingdom that's going to persecute God's people. Um, the little horn of Daniel 7. So let's look at these eight identifying um, features. 
it ascends to power following the fall of the Western Roman Empire. It's geographically located in Rome. It destroyed three kingdoms that also emerged from the breakup of the Roman Empire. Speak great words against the Most High. It is a political and religious power. It is ruled by one man. It persecuted God's people for 1260 years and it think to change time and law. Now, the God of heaven is the one who determines time. The God of heaven is the one whose law is being challenged. We know that the God of heaven, the law, is the Ten Commandments. So the issue at the end of time, when we talk about the mark of the beast, the issue is over worship. Right. There you go. Thank you. Yes. Now we're getting into it. Go ahead. It's over worship. All right. it, who's, who do we worship? Do we worship the beast and its image, or do we worship God? So in the book of Revelation chapter 14, we see an angel uh, came down from heaven saying, Worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the fountains of water. Revelation 14, 6. But in Revelation 14, 7, it warns against those who worship the beast and its image. So the issue in the world today is, do I belong, as a practicing Christian, do I belong to the kingdom of God and obey the laws of the kingdom of God, or do I belong to a false system of worship that speaks against the Most High God? And that system of worship is headed up by one man. The origin is in Europe, specifically in Rome, that has its own law. So our eternal destiny as Christians rests upon who we worship. Mm -hmm. So if we take a look at this. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion, that's Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome. They had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. Well, how could they be destroyed Yet the lies were wrong. It means characteristics of these earthly kingdoms. So two kingdoms. There is a heavenly kingdom and an earthly kingdom. And Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. So if he is not of this world, is that which kingdom do we belong to? All right. Revelation, we looked at this already. So let us take a look at the thought of changing God's law. Okay? Here's God's Ten Commandments. So that, that is a system of worship, and we know that system of worship was derived from the papacy. It's well documented in history. So as we look at it, we're going to take a look at the law of God versus the law of the kingdom, of that earthly kingdom okay. that has both religious and political power, that holds both. It's ruled by one man. It is known as the universal church. So if we take a look at the Ten Commandments, in Exodus chapter 23 to 5, it reads, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children upon the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. But look at the papacy's Ten Commandments, the first commandment. Mm -hmm. It just says, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have no, uh, any gods before me. Mm -hmm. What it has removed from the Ten Commandments, God's Ten Commandments, is the practice of idolatry. Mm -hmm. Bow down to them, or serve me. So it tried to change times, uh, God's law so that it could adhere to its practice of idolatrous worship. Mm -hmm. That's one example of it. Let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at the fourth commandment. The fourth commandment in the Ten Commandments reads, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. But the papacy changes the Ten Commandments and the fourth commandments it uses it you as mean a, the fourth a, commandment. Change it, it changes the fourth the commandment. The first. It changes the first. Change the first. Yeah. It changed the, the fourth commandment, mm -hmm. and it makes it the third commandment. Mm -hmm. But look at how it reads. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. So the rest of God's commandments, it removed it. Mm -hmm. 
Look at what the note it says. The papacy says so. The Jewish celebration of Sabbath begins at sundown on Friday evening and lasts until sundown on Saturday. Catholic, Protestant, and Orthodox Christians go to church on Sunday, treating it as the Lord's Day instead of Saturday to honor the day Christ rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. So there is no scripture that instructs us or commands us to worship the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Worship is given to the creator God, not to the resurrected God. Now, we cannot slight the resurrection because if Christ died and is resurrected, then we have a hope. Oh, could, could you repeat that? I think, I think you might have, uh, if I didn't get it, you said not to be worshiped the resurrected God. Yes. What, what, what I simply mean is mm -hmm. that we're not worshiping the resurrection. Right. Okay. You're, you're worshiping the resurrected God. The resurrected God. Yeah, exactly. I think the, that's the that's way to yeah, put it. Okay. okay. Yeah. So now we have two of the commandments it has changed. Remember, the God's Ten Commandments is unchangeable. This beast, this kingdom, has a law that is unchangeable. It claims to be unchangeable. Okay. It claims to be unchangeable. And so, if we follow the Ten Commandments, where does that lead us? If we follow the Ten Commandments, we worship the Creator God. Mm -hmm. If we follow the, the commandments, the Sabbath commandment, as um, noted in the altered Ten Commandments, we worship another being. Mm -hmm. All right, so the division is right there. The division the is right there. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Now, now in, in addition, and you did mention it, in addition, we want to make it easier, easy, the easiest uh, that we can for our audience to understand the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's not a literal mark. That's correct. All right? It's a mark of Obedience, mm -hmm. uh, you one will have to be obedient to God or to a, another power, mm -hmm. beast or king or kingdom. And I want to point out this, that in heaven, really, it's over, the mark of the beast is about worship. Mm -hmm. It's not a literal mark. That's correct. All right, so one should win... The vaccine, would you say the vaccine would be a, it? No, because the beast is a kingdom. Exactly. Okay. So the mark is... So, it, so, so, so the vaccine could not be... That's correct. In a million years, we could not even think of it as a mark of the That's beast. That's correct. That's correct. Th that's what we're talking yeah. about. But it's about worship. That's correct. And in heaven, mm -hmm. you see, the issue between Christ and Satan, anywhere you cut it, is about worship. That's correct. In heaven, it was about what? Worship. Mm -hmm. Because the devil wants to, or Lucifer wants to be worshipped. Worship. All right. As God. When he comes to the, the Garden of Eden, it was about what? Worship. Mm -hmm. Right? There's a tree there, obedient. Mm -hmm. You should be obedient to God, or you shouldn't touch that tree. All right? When you come down to Babylon, it was about what? Worship. worship. Bow worship down and, and worship. All right? When Jesus came, it was about what? Worship. Mm -hmm. He took him on the hill. And he said, if you bow down to me, mm -hmm. and just before Jesus comes back, the thing will be, the issue will be about what? Worship. Worship. Absolutely. And so this is a part you're trying to bring out. Yeah. And I just want to make those yeah. points. So there are two kingdoms. Yes. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of the earth. Yes. Of this world. A kingdom that's governed by the rule of God, the Ten Commandments, and then a kingdom that's been governed by the laws of men. So that means a tradition. People is going to follow a tradition. And there are very many people, good people, that are caught up in the system. So just before Jesus comes, we, we see in the book of Revelation chapter 18, a call to come out of her, my people, and be not what partakers of her sins. Mm -hmm. So a sin is the transgression of God's law. Right. So they are there. They have good hearts for, 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 yes, for God. Yes, yes. And, and people are really looking and hoping for the second coming of Christ. Absolutely. But we should not be tricked. And this is why we're having this program uh, today. And, and of course, uh, in terms of the Adventist church, I would say, as I'm a part of the Adventist church, and, and other churches too, that do explain prophecy. 
Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we shouldn't get caught up in is, is um, not in having our facts right. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're anxious for the coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. we, we have to be careful what the decisions we make based on other people's views mm -hmm. or philosophy or ideas. As you rightly said, go back to the scripture. Yeah. Let's wrap it up. Do, how much more do you have left? Okay. So let's take a look at this here. Because I have more questions for you. Okay. So let us take a look at this. Question, which is the Sabbath day? Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church in the Council of Laodicea transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. That was quoted out of the Peter Gurman's Converse Catechism of Catholic yeah. Doctrine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they, they are not shy to say no, we have no. made the changes. Mm -hmm. If we take a look at them, please. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible. And this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. The Catholic Record of London, Ontario, September 1, 1923. So the mark of the beast is a rebellion against the law of God. Yes. And it finds itself in worship. Do we worship God on the seventh day Sabbath? It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy? Or do we take a form, a tradition that has been established by a kingdom that is, trying, is the counterfeit of the kingdom of God mm -hmm. to establish itself in this earth? And it seeks worship. So if you take a look at the book of Revelation chapter 13, it's about worship to the beast. So what is the mark of the beast? Sunday sacredness. Yeah. And we're moving there now very slowly because the earth needs to rest. Mm -hmm. We have to save the world. Climate change is destroying us. Mm -hmm. We need to give families rest. So a seventh day rest, remember God promises us rest. But that rest is in, that rest is in Christ. But that rest can only be experienced when that rest in Christ, when we keep the commandments of God. In John 14, 15, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yes, and my sheep, Hear my voice yes. and follow. Very nice, very nice. So um, I hope that that um, when we hear about the vaccine as the mark of the beast, based on scripture, it could not be. That's correct. All right. Yeah. And so we should not be get we should not get caught up in that. All right. Now the killer. Mm -hmm. I hope you can answer this one. Okay. All right. Um, and this is, I call it the killer. Since the vaccine then could not be based on scripture, the mark of the beast, don't you think then that the vaccine mandate set forth by the government mm -hmm. around the world, mm -hmm. by the way, gives us a bird's eye view of how the decree to have the mark of the beast will be executed in the final analysis. And I must give my daughter credit for that. We yeah. were talking. Mm -hmm. And I said, Nana, I want to prepare a sermon because so many people have been calling me about, said, Pastor, could you explain to, I am not taking this vaccine because it's the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. And I tried to explain to them, no, uh, that is not so. So I was telling my daughter, and he said, you know, Dad, that is true. But look at what is happening to the mandate mm -hmm. that government gives. Mm -hmm. um, you will lose your job. Mm -hmm. You perhaps will not be able to go to a store unless you take the vaccine mm -hmm. today. Or what? Explain to us. Don't you think that this could be, if they didn't know how to mandate it worldwide. This is a good idea. Well, this is the grand rehearsal. Come on. For the big game to come. This is a grand rehearsal. I this think a grand so. rehearsal. Yes. And democracies, under, 
d democratic forms of government, we've lost our freedoms. Here in Canada, we have the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. We've lost that now, okay? Everyone has had to subject themselves to the mandates. Now, they were, the mandates were needed because they had it, they, those were mitigating measures to stop the spread of the vaccine. But the ease with which it was implemented that the governments, they were not democratic any or they did not display or show any form of democracy. It was an automatic form of governments. So what is coming when that rest day is going to be imposed, and we know it's coming, okay? Mm -hmm. When it's going to be imposed, that Sunday day of rest, that we all have to take it, and that it means that the government is going to be implementing the measures in the name of the common good. Of the people. And we've, sa we've seen that with the rest, with the nature, uh, and look at really the world is really being destroyed yeah. by the ozone is... So they're going, to use, they're going to use climate change yeah. as mm -hmm. one way of introducing this day of rest. Yes, and of course, I think there's a meeting call for all state... Um, oh, they just held in Scotland, the COP26, yes. Right, but what about religious groups were invited to, to sit, uh, I think, with the Pope too, to talk about uh, something that we can uh, agree on, everybody... I, I can't recall, I can't remember how it goes. Okay, so if you take a look at it, if you take a look, Revelation chapter 13 says, and the whole world wandered after the beast. Mm -hmm. So it means that there's gonna be a respect, a reverence. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be an appeal that people would want to un associate themselves with this, false, with this false kingdom, this counterfeit kingdom. Why? Because it's pursuing goals that are desirable we would like to have and they are good goals very good goals that's yeah. right but what did it say he deceives the whole world mm -hmm. so we find ourselves now so the mark in the head or in the hand in the head i've thought of it i've accepted it that's fine i'm going to worship on sunday mm -hmm. but those who receive it in the hand is by the actions they're going to conform to legislation, just as how this grand rehearsal happened. We're going to conform to legislation. Why? Because we want to be able to buy and sell. Right. So there are two marks. Mm -hmm. One will be in the hand, mm -hmm. which is not a literal mark. That's correct. Right? And one in the forehead, forehead mm -hmm. which is not a literal mark. That's correct. Oh, people are, mm -hmm. you know. So one is your intelligence, your obedience mm -hmm. to God. That's which is, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the other one is that you will not buy and sell. It's not a literal mark mm -hmm. that you'll have in your hand. Somebody say, open your hand, let me see your mark. No, it will be whether you'll be working on Sabbath, mm -hmm. whether you'll be buying or selling mm -hmm. in, 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 uh, on, on Sabbath, mm -hmm. right? Or, um, or you'll be going to church mm -hmm. on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, we're so, not... We're not, we're not um, Speaking against Sunday worshippers in no, any way. No, 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 no. We are talking about a system. So, right? What it is, the yeah. mark is character formation. Right. That's what it is. Exactly. I am willing to accept, okay? So here's the law of God. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to willing to be accept every argument that says the law of God was nailed to the cross. Mm -hmm. Or the law of God um, is not meaningful any longer. That was for the Jews. So you'd have thought about it. If you take a look at the book of Revelation chapter, not Revelation, um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, I think it's somewhere verse 10 or 11. And it talks of, well, first of all, it talks about this man who sits in the temple of God claiming to be God, to be worshipped as God. That's, that's who it's talking about. Yes, yes. And many would have had a chance to, de to discover the deception, but they went along with it. That's right. how you receive it in the head. So it's character formation. All right. So we have to wrap up. Um, it's detailed, and it perhaps it's not one that you would really, really quickly uh, understand the backdrop of this whole thing. But please, I'm going to ask you to go back gradually, day by day, listen a little bit, take notes, and you'll get to understand. Mm -hmm. Could you give us a little, little point, wrapping up what you'd like to really to narrate down what is the mark of the beast? 
Okay. Just so, give us a, some yes. pointers. So it has to do with worship, the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Either we, we accept God's commandments and mm -hmm. worship on Sabbath, right. or we accept the tradition of a church and worship on Sunday. Right. So basically a character has been formed. Either I rebel against the law of God and receive that character that is defined or as the mark, as the mark or the authority that I'm wi willing to worship, or am I going to form the character of Christ Remember, remember, remember the image, the mm -hmm. image of the beast? Ba Babylon. Well, th we also talk about Christ, the image of Christ mm -hmm. being formed in us. Right. Okay? So the image of Christ being formed in us, we worship on the Sabbath. The image of the beast formed in us, we worship on Sunday. All right. Thank you. I want the best for, my, for all of us yeah. uh, as Christians. And I think even those people who are, uh, I wouldn't say, uh, let me, I want to put it very mildly who misunderstand them, I would say, because based on scripture, mm -hmm. it could not be, because it's about worship, mm -hmm. right? So, it, so really, that part of it is wiped out. But we want everybody to have a closer walk with Christ, not to be fooled and tricked in these last days, because one of, and I pointed out, one of the first signs of Jesus coming is deception. Deception. All right. And deception comes in many, many, many ways. Mm -hmm. Because when you are deceived, you will be confused. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a little final note here. We, are, we, um, we also know that the final movements will be rapid ones. That's correct. All right. As we come to the end of time. Soon the mark of the beast uh, will be here and the world will know it. Because we are part of this world. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you, let me throw this in. I, it might be a stupid question, but on this program we mm -hmm. do little things sometimes mm -hmm. often. But, but um, can somebody know that he or she has the mark of the beast? No, no one would know. No, man. no one is going to know. No. If you look at the book of Matthew chapter 7, 22, 23, many shall come to me in that day and says, Lord, Lord, didn't we? Mm -hmm. So these are people who... Held, had, had Christ as the but, but, but wouldn't be people consciously choose? There's a, a way of choice in the last days. Either you choose the beast or you worship the beast or you worship Christ. Oh, the character would have been formed. Okay. So if you take a look at Second Thessalonians, um, the Bible says that God is going to allow them to believe the lie. Oh, yes. God right. is not going to change their choices. Mm. So the character has been formed. I'm going to be worshiping on that day and nothing is going to change my mind. So it's like the conscience has been seared. Ah, now, I see. That's so, a big one. So these are the people that... So that means you will be thinking you're doing the right thing? That's correct. Yes. Wow. And then the, the world now mm -hmm. that does not believe in God, mm -hmm. well, then it's business as usual. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I think at that time, probation would have been closed then. Eh? Yes, probation uh, uh, would be closed. Would have been closed yeah, and you can't is. change. You know, you it can't is. change your thinking, your thought. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is just, let him be. Amen. All right. So, um, researchers have, uh, researchers or research has shown that the typical person makes about 2,000 decisions every walking hour. <laughs> when I read that, I was amazed. But when it comes to making decision or decisions, especially for eternity, or any decision for that matter. Do not make decision based on emotion. And do not make your decision based on heresy. Base your decision on facts, based on scripture. And we must have discerning eyes in these last days to be able to distinguish between truth and error so that we may not be tossed about by every wind of doctrine. Mm -hmm. God gives us a road map, and that is the Bible. Let us study it. Use it. Spiritual things, always remember this, that spiritual things are spiritually discerned. I hope that this discussion would have been help to somebody out there. Let me know. Phone and tell me. Write. Yeah, look at my... Uh, on the screen, you'll see my address, my name. I would like to hear from you. It might be a difficult one. It might not be the one that you really eat up as quick. But if you went back and uh, read and study, you'll get to understand it. But make known 
that the vaccine could never be the mark of the beast based on scripture. God bless you. Hope to see you next week at 9 to 10 p.m. Please subscribe, give me a push, and bring a friend. God bless you real good. Thank you. Jesus.